Hey guys, it's Dr. Lee again. <clears throat> I'm uh, com coming back to you with another Darn Path case, and um, I'm trying out this new video format to see if it benefits you guys. I know that Darn Path can be kind of hard to learn, so a little bit of guidance and, and these short lessons are actually, uh, I, I think they may help, so let's give it a go. This is a benign sweat duct tumor. I know it's very pigmented and it's dark everywhere, so you, know, you would think about like a melanoma or of some sort, but no, this is actually a benign sweat duct tumor. And classifying these lesions, um, I should start by saying, it, it's there's a lot of confusion in this because you have to, there's a bunch of names and, you know, a lot of them don't really make any sense. But to simplify it for you, it doesn't matter. That's the key. It doesn't matter. It's a benign sweat duct tumor. Um, but we're, we're going to touch briefly into like the different subtypes and why, you know, people decided to name it differently. So they are all the same cells that make up all these additional subtypes. You know, the main difference is where the location, uh, where the lesion, lesional cells are located within the skin. Uh, when it's limited to the epidermis, you know, people call that hydroacanthoma simplex. A little bit deeper down, in, um, you know, in the upper dermis, small nested things, uh, we call that a dermal duct tumor. And further down, you have the poroma, then you have the hydrad hydradenoma solid and cystic type. But if you just wanted to call this thing benign sweat duct tumor, that would be perfectly fine by me at least. Um, <clears throat> so, but, but for teaching purposes, we're gonna talk about this thing. And uh, before we get into actually looking at this lesion, I think that we should probably look at what the sweat duct looks like. And these are from Google, you can look them up yourself. So here you have sweat gland, and these kind of ducts carry the, the secretary fluid um, pretty much all the way through the epidermis here into the stratum corneum, and that's how, actually how you produce sweat. Um, so this is a sort of a you know an H and E depiction of that same process. These are your glands down here, and then the duct empties out through the surface. So you see these cells here; they're all very blue. Um, those are the cells that, that make up the tumors that we're going to be looking at. One important thing here is if you know how you can identify them as ducts is. Uh, It'll have a cuticle lining. You see these, uh, this pink hyper hyper eosinophilic pink thing with a space at the middle. That's a cuticle lining, and, it, and that's why it's pink. So let's look back at the tumor now. So you know, the first thing we have to do here is identify that those are the same cells. Um, some of the clues that you're seeing here, the architecture of the lesion, you have multiple connections to the epidermis. You know, like hanging off the epidermis. Um, and that's sort of typical for like a poroma variant of this lesion. Um, that's helpful clue. And then if you look around, these these clear spaces with this pink fluid in there, that's actually like the secretions. That's like the sweat material. Um, you know, if you put down here, there's a, sort of a, uh, a clear space. It's hard to see, but. Alright, I give up. <laughs> this little space down here. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a little clear space there, and um, let's, let's take a look at higher power now. And you can see very similar cells as the, as the sort of blue cells that we're looking at over here. Um, you scan around, they're sort of monotonous. They're, you don't have too much pleomorphism, and if you guys remember, pleomorphism means variability in sizes and shapes. And in general, if you do see mitotic figures, they will not be atypical. I'm having a hard time finding any. So here, this is some, you know, like, here's a structure here. I think that may be a, you know, I don't know why it's so red in there, but um, I believe that's probably some kind of sweat or serum or something like that. Here, and here, you can see this char characteristic uh, ductual structures. Can you make out the, uh, the pink cuticle lining in there? So, and, you know, in these sweat duct tumors, you may probably you know, pretty frequently find mitotic figures, but they will never be atypical or you know tripolar mitoses. But in this lesion, I'm having a hard time finding any. So the keys to the diagnosis again. Here's another ductual. Keys to the diagnosis from low power. You know, um, it's a very well circumscribed lesion here. Right? You have multiple connections to the epidermis, um, and you can see spaces, uh, uh, cleared out spaces with some sweat-like fluid. And um, we come to higher power just to make sure that we don't have any atypical mites, which we wouldn't expect. 
and um, try to find some duck jewels. And if you get caught, there's an additional thing you can do is to do a CEA stain just to be sure. The CEA is um, an immuno stain that that will help highlight the ducks. So, so that's what we have. Um, again, this is a benign sweat duct tumor. Uh, often, some people call these things acrosporomas. And in this case, I'd probably classify this thing as a nodular and cystic hydradenoma. Um, but not to confuse you, benign sweat duct tumor. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing here and you're learning, please let people know. So. Uh, you know, they can get the benefit out of this as well. Um, and, you know, like, subscribe, and I'll, I'll try to post a video every single day. And thanks a lot.